everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roshni and this channel is dedicated to talking about mental health and self-worth. I've had lots of depressive phases in my life and lots of moments of self-doubt and you know I had lots of ups and downs in my college career. But when it came to entrepreneurship, there was something about this that was completely different and I wanted to make a video and I wanted to talk about something that a lot of people like content creators and people who have their own businesses face. And I noticed that a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs or YouTube creators talk about, you know, getting burnt out or just feeling like they need a break off. And so for a lot of people who, um, you know, are like vloggers and their life is their day-to-day -day job and their material for their day-to-day -day job, it's just harder and harder in the times of technology to separate business and work from your day-to-day -day life. And... There's just a lot that comes with that that takes a toll on our mental health. So I wanted to talk about some of the things that we experience as entrepreneurs or content creators when it comes to um, just certain perspectives or certain things that are unique to our positions that take a toll on our mental health. But then I also wanted to kind of focus on the solution side as well. Something that is, you know, unique to someone who makes a living out of something that they love is that you start to resent something that you used to love or something that used to be your favorite hobby. So um, in my experience, you know, I'm a total nerd. I loved learning about psychology. But when we make a business out of it or we make a YouTube channel about our music or we start touring or, you know, we start getting into like management fees and business deals and, you know, different things that are more on the logistics side of it, we start to kind of lose that passion because it's not so organic and the one thing that we kind of turn to or, you know, went to in a last resort or that we used as a form of art became, you know, this thing that we kind of feel like controls our lot. That basically, if you, if art, if like videography really was what you love and like that's your main passion, then either have like a few projects that you're working on just for fun that aren't for you to sell or that you're not like thinking about in like a marketing perspective or just have a completely different hobby that you start to take up like you know learning a new language or crocheting or um you know learn a new sport or whatever so like either find some have something in your life that you don't take that seriously that isn't the main thing that you're doing because what happened is that you had your day-to-day -day life you developed this one art that you loved and that kind of became your safe haven and then that became what you do in your day-to-day -day life. So now you're back in this place where you don't have another safe haven that isn't going to filter back into everything else. You know what I mean? So either having a side project within your medium of art that you prefer or having an extra hobby that you start to take up or learn um, is always good just to kind of get that creative side out of you because we all suck when we're trying to be creative it's one time or another so to have a, a medium where you can just kind of get that like weird energy out of you before you really get to like the good juicy stuff is really important and it's hard to do that when everything means something and everything matters like the pressure just builds and builds and builds so for me um, as much as I love making videos and editing and doing and creating content I also love painting and I don't take it as seriously. I only paint for myself. I don't paint with the idea of um, selling or anything that I'm making. And because of that, I don't really care if I mess up. I'm more willing to be creative. I'm more willing to be patient with myself and I'm not so rushed on finishing a painting. Like sometimes it takes me months to get back to a painting because I just do it whenever I feel like it. And that's something that is a really healthy outlet to have is that we start to resent our one hobby that we loved. So um, with the videography example, you know, if that was truly your escape and your art form that you loved, and now all of a sudden it becomes, you know, this thing with all these stressful deadlines and all these people to please and all these variables with, you know, how much money it's going to make or how many views it's going to get, that becomes really, really stressful. And we can start to resent the one thing that we really, really loved. And it's really hard to find that balance and to not want to judge ourselves in that process. So another thing that I wanted to talk about um, is that we start to resent really great things in life. So um, things like, you know, time with your family or time just doing nothing 
or, um, you know, just like the little moments of like cooking a meal and taking, you know, a few hours to do that with your loved ones and then to, you know, enjoy the meal, like taking time and just living in a slow way is something that we really start to resent once you're an entrepreneur, once you have your own business, because at that point you're setting your own hours. You know that time is money. You know that any time where you're not doing something productive or making money is time that's quote unquote not well spent or kind of a waste um, because you're not getting to like the end point of making more money or getting more attention or getting more views or whatever your end goals are. And so that becomes really debilitating when, you know, we want to just be able to have a moment of quiet time with our family and not be thinking about, is this something I need to be vlogging or, you know, do I need to be making another video or do I need to be editing right now or thinking about how much work is piling up? Um, And even if you have employees that are taking care of a lot of these things for you, when it comes to your own business and especially when it comes to content creating, it's always, you know, on to the next thing. When it's a business, you're on to the next launch or the next product or you're, you know, trying to make all these new things that you've set up like work logistically. And whenever, you know, it's a content creator situation, you're working on the next video or the next blog post or, you know, all of the above. And it's never really about celebrating what you accomplished. It's about just moving on to the next thing. And it becomes really difficult to just live our day-to-day lives when everything is so, when anything that we want to do that isn't working is a waste of time. And no human can live like that forever. Like that's just not a sustainable way to live no matter how much you love what you do. Because at the end of the day, you're either going to resent the art form that you loved and that job that you loved or the business that you loved, or you're going to end up resenting your family or your own hobbies or your gym time or your lack of all of the above because you aren't able to find a good balance. So neither way is sustainable and you're either going to end up feeling guilty or you're going to have a lot of cognitive dissonance about both situations, about the whole situation, because you're not going to feel fulfilled. It'll feel like both things are kind of slipping out of your hands and like you're not fully in one or the other. And a solution that I wanted to mention for this is to start scheduling in white space and start scheduling in Uh, certain vacations or time off. So if you do own your own business um, or you're in control of your income, use that to your advantage and like find the best time for you to schedule off some time. So I would definitely schedule white space at least every two weeks, but ideally every week. And that can just be two to three hours of doing nothing. Um, And white space is basically just time to do nothing. So it's a scheduled time in your planner where you say, this is just me time. This is time to do nothing. I'm not going to plan meetings during this. Like anything that you need as a creative person or as an individual or as a form of self-care is something that you can do during white space. And then that's step one. And the second is step is scheduling some sort of time off or some sort of vacation time. So this, again, can uh, differ depending on what you actually do. But um, you can maybe take a week every month or maybe you can take, you know, one month at a Having both of those uh, things scheduled is really, really helpful. First of all, it's been noted that vacations actually help you work better, whether you're working for a company or for yourself. They help you uh, become more creative. They help you feel more focused when you're actually at work. You feel rejuvenated and you're kind of ready to put all of yourself back into work when you get back. And so when you're thinking about owning a sustainable business long term for, you know, multiple decades, you're going to need some time off. It's just human. It's just what we all need to be able to be in the game long term. And so it's important for you to look ahead and avoid the guilt by just saying, this is my time and this is what's going to help me be a better CEO. And looking at those three hours every two weeks that you take of white space is not going to be the end of the world when it comes down to you know, being able to use that time to do what it takes to help you come back to work the next day, feeling refreshed and feeling fulfilled. The third thing that I wanted to talk about is feeling stuck. And so much of the last number of, I felt this way so many times over the last few months, the feeling of being stuck that I'm talking about is wanting to invest in and prioritize your business, but then needing your business to do well so that you can keep prioritizing it and investing in it. And 
I wasn't necessarily planning on sharing this, but I can and go into more detail in another video about it as well if you want me to, so let me know in the comments if you want to hear more. But from my last job, I actually uh, ended up taking a few months off. I saved up a lot of money. Um, that was enough to cover all my expenses and rent and groceries and all of that for a number of months, and I took that time to just invest in my business, to work on that every single day. Same time, I wasn't able to really turn any kind of real profit. And that really sucked. And so by the end of that time, I was kind of running towards the end of my savings and I wasn't really sure what to do. I knew I was going to have to get another job. And it was really hard to just admit that in some ways I kind of failed. And I wasn't necessarily setting myself up in the best possible way to, you know, have a set limit of months that I had to be successful in. But at that point, I'd already been working on my channel and on different things for a number of months. And so I really was just kind of heartbroken and upset. And I wasn't sure if I should keep doing it. I didn't know if I was talented at all. And there were all these doubts that really started to come up. Um, and it was getting really hard for me to keep prioritizing my business. And that's why in December, I decided to just take some time off because during that time away, I genuinely thought that I was going to just quit. And I ended up um, having enough time away that I actually really missed it. And I knew that I wanted to come back and I knew it was something that I just loved and that was in me and that I wanted to do. And that was a really important realization. Um, but it was really difficult because then I had to, you know, at the end of those few months that I had off, I had to go back and get a job. I was, you know, again, working 40 or more hours a week. Um, you know, I was not as home, not home as much. I wasn't home alone as much. And so it became harder and harder to record. And I was just editing in like any of my free time after work or on the weekends I was spent editing or filming. Um, and then, like I said, you know, before, once you're done with one video, you don't have time to like celebrate or wait around. You're just on to the next one or you're doing multiple at the same time and you just have a lot going on. And so because of that, you know, I felt like either my work like, I felt like something was going to slip. It just didn't, it wasn't a good balance at all. And so if any of you are feeling like that, you are not alone. Um, and I just want to say that it, it really sucks to feel that stuck. Um, but my solution to this is just to find your new normal. So I've had to do this multiple times. I've had to like, I switched from a part-time job, which wasn't working out and wasn't giving me enough money to a full-time job. I ended up having to I was getting so overwhelmed and so frustrated with having consistent videos that I was putting up um, that, you know, I had to take a little bit of a break from that and just kind of start over. I had to completely, you know, look at my content and change that around and make it something that I was more personally invested in and something that reflected myself more. Um, I ended up having to buy a new camera. Um, and so again, like that's a financial investment. And with filming, that was, you know, uh, an investment of time. And after that, you know, I decided to uh, move from working in the office to working from home at my new job. And um, that was definitely a bit of a sacrifice as well, because I know that, you know, being social and being around people every day was really, really good for my mental health. I had some great coworkers at the office that I really liked. Um, but I decided to kind of put that on the back burner and keep working from home be in a little bit more isolation just so I can record these videos. So there's lots of different choices that I had to make to keep putting the business first and to keep investing. So you need to find a sustainable and new normal that works for you. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about is that we get really overly attached to results. So what I mean by that is that, you know, whenever you're starting out in a business or, you know, with a, as a content creator, you need to look up at numbers and numbers become really important. You need to look at um, you know, what your income is, what your financial goals are, what your views are, what your likes are, how, the, you know, the ratios are playing. Do you have good engagement? Like all these things become really, really important. When we focus on that a lot, we kind of start to see that as more important than everything else. And when you think about like the example of like a kid cheating in school, you know, like if they have really, really hardcore parents and, you know, you have to get 100, a 99 isn't good enough, a 98 isn't good enough, you need to have 100 or above on every single assignment or else you're not good enough. That's going to put so much pressure on the kid to then do whatever it takes to get that 100, whether it's, you know, cheating or kind of sabotaging someone else. It could be so many different things. 
um, that someone can do, but they start to cut corners or they start to kind of prioritize that over like basic morals and you know what's really right and wrong and that's not their fault it's because all this pressure is being put on them to only perform x y and z and anything else is unacceptable or not good enough and it's the same thing when we get older we translate that same mentality to all these other things that we're doing and now it doesn't end when school is over with grades but any of us it doesn't have to just be an entrepreneur any of us can measure our worth in likes or in you know, interactions or whatever when it comes to social media. So now it's something that's infiltrating all of us and it's not leaving us anytime soon, right? Everything in life is becoming a numbers game. So it's really, really important to not pay too much attention to the results. And I'm not saying not set goals. I'm not saying to not set measurable, specific goals because that is really important. But instead to just change your mindset and shift your perspective around them a little bit. So one of my uh, major solutions for this is to look at how much you're progressing alongside those uh, financial goals or numerical goals. So um, something that is really important for me is going back and like watching some of my oldest videos because I never have gone on my channel and like deleted old content or anything like that. And so I'll go on and I'll watch like my first couple videos and sometimes I'll be surprised at like what I was saying and and what I made like I'd be like this is better than I honestly thought and obviously at times like things are going to be cringy or you'll be like oh I look so different or I would never wear that or I would never say that now or you know there's all these different things that you kind of look back and it can either be kind of funny to see how much you've grown and changed or it can be actually kind of impressive to see like that piece of like gold or that piece of like talent that was in you all along and kind of seeing yourself like develop that throughout the years like that's really amazing so look at your progress alongside those measurable goals and reward the effort that you're putting into things you're about to put on like a major launch right and there are hours and hours you know months of preparation that go into it and the launch does pretty well sometimes we forget it about we forget how much effort it really took for us to put into that, you know, one thing. And it's great that it did well, but we need to celebrate and reward that effort in ourselves again. There's actually been multiple studies shown by uh, Carol Dweck, and I'm sure a lot of you have actually heard about this, but the growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Someone with a fixed mindset would look at, you know, just the numbers and say, you know what, I'm I'm not good enough or I'm not smart or I am smart. You know, it, it kind of is one or the other. So, you know, if you've had like a channel with millions of subscribers that has amazing engagement and you're doing great and you have one video that doesn't even get a million views, are you immediately going to say I'm a failure or are you going to say, okay, maybe that challenge that I did or maybe that tag that I did or maybe, you know, the content that I talked about in that video just didn't hit it off. Does that make me a bad person? No. Does that mean that I have lost all my talent. No, it just means that I need to pivot a little bit and that one direction wasn't great. And that's when it, you know, when it comes down to being a business owner or a content creator, we're either constantly testing things by putting out new pieces of content and new blog posts and new forms of outreach, or we're, you know, putting out new products or new services. We're changing how we do things. We're bettering our systems. We're getting new technology in anything we do. You know, like I was saying earlier, we're always focused on the next thing. We end up, you know, looking at just what we've been able to achieve on a very surface level without going in depth and saying, what have I truly learned? How have I bettered my art? So if this is something that you struggle with, if there's a certain time, you know, every couple of weeks or every month or every week, when you sit down and you look at, you know, your goals or your progression over the last uh, period of time since your last meeting, Add a few questions to that to say, you know, what have I progressed? What do I do differently? How has my art grown? And you don't need to sit there and write an essay and do all these different things. You can, you know, reflect on that. You can record a quick video about that. And then, you know, at the end of the year, look at all those videos and see how much you really changed. Something that I recently thought of that I'm going to start trying is writing something that I learned or something that I was grateful for every single week and then just going through it at the end of the year. At the end of the year, that's only 50 little sentences to read, but to be able to like look at how much you've changed and looked and like learned over the last year will be crazy to do that all at one time. Uh, I encourage you to find some form of way that you can 
sit in a bit of self-reflection or reflection on your art or growth every single time that you're looking at your numbers. So when it comes to a growth mindset, you know, a child that is priori that is praised on how much effort they're putting into things will work harder, will be more focused, will be more diligent when it comes to trying and trying again. Or someone that's just told that they're smart when they get things right will be more likely to cheat or to feel really bad about themselves if they end up getting something wrong because then they feel like, oh, I'm not smart anymore. But when we constantly praise someone's effort and then they do well, you know, you're saying, okay, this is what hard work and this is what effort pays out in. You know, you end up succeeding. And if they don't do well or if they're struggling with something, then you say, okay, well, just keep the effort up, keep practicing, keep coming back to it, keep revisiting it or relearning it or you know, whatever you need to do to get better at this. And one day you genuinely will get there. The last thing that I wanted to say is that when it comes to a business or when it comes to, you know, a form of entrepreneurship, I don't think that there's a point in giving up. I think that you should never give up when there's something that you're genuinely really passionate about. Um, I think that, you know, if you have even an ounce of passion or even a little bit of like that sense that you're going to regret it, if you stop doing it, then keep doing it. that if you have an ounce of passion left or an ounce of feeling like you would regret not, do, not continuing to do the thing that you're passionate about or continuing on with your business then stick with it, find a way to pivot around your day-to-day -day schedule, your day-to-day -day routines, find a new niche or a new way to um, make that art form or that desire happen. She's on one. Okay, um, then find a way to make it work. But if you genuinely feel like you've pivoted in every direction, you've tried everything, you have exhausted every option, and that you honestly can't do it anymore, then just cut ties with it and cut your losses and grieve that process and grieve that side of yourself and that part of yourself and then let yourself free. Because a lot of the times we as entrepreneurs or as content creators will say, my business is my baby, my product is my baby, my service is my baby, um, it's so important to me, it's everything. And we have a really hard time kind of shutting that part of ourselves off. And when it's finally over or when we've kind of run our course or when we just feel like it's not in our life path to continue on with it, we can feel so much guilt and so much struggle and so much just not being fully sure. And some of us will feel completely peaceful, like letting that part of ourselves go. Um, but when you're struggling with that, just remember that it's okay that you lived, you know, its course and that it doesn't mean that you're a failure. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that you're incapable of making things happen. It just means that you fulfilled that part of your life and now you're moving on and you have to properly grieve that and let that go, especially if you thought you were going to be doing it for much longer. But once you kind of let that possible self or that idea go, you will honestly feel so worried. Just allow yourself to let go because a lot of the times we want to stay in that middle ground where, you know, this is who we were for so long and we don't know how to fully say goodbye, but we also know that we're not doing that on a day-to-day -day, on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we're telling people that, it's not exactly right. And, you know, it's that annoying and comfortable like, transition period that we want to make as smooth as possible. So it's important to really grieve that possible self, that idea of who you would have been if you had kept on doing that for however many more years. And instead, fully let go of that and embrace that it ran its course and allow yourself to just embrace this new chapter in your life and to treat it as a beautiful new beginning. I mean, I really hope that you learned something and enjoyed this video. And as always, happy healing.